Hey guys, welcome to part four. In this video, we're going to take a look at extruding, insetting and beveling shapes, as well as loop cuts. So first of all, I'm going to select my cube and from the drop down in the top left, I can switch over to edit mode. Now the shortcut on the keyboard for this is tab. And whilst you're in edit mode, you're going to get much more control over the shape of, well, your shape. So you can see here that I'm currently set to vertex select and a vertex is basically another name for an anchor point just in 3D space. And the shortcut for this mode is one on the keyboard. Next we have edge select. Now an edge is a line that connects two vertexes or to be grammatically correct, vertices. And the shortcut for this is two. Lastly, we have face select and a face is essentially the surface that is connected by multiple vertices. And the shortcut for this is three. So we can quickly cycle between these different selection modes by pressing one, two, and three on the keyboard respectively. So if I start in vertex select, you can see I can either click on or drag over a vertex and then press G to use the move tool to move this exactly the same way that I would move an object. I can then use edge select to select multiple edges holding shift and then again use the move tool to adjust the height. Alternatively, I could switch to face select and then select this face here and then press S for the scale tool and scale this up or down. Or I could switch back to edge select and select these left and right edges and scale them outwards or inwards or even rotate them. So in the same way that you can adjust the position, rotation or scale of an object, you can do exactly the same for the vertices, edges and faces. Something else that's really useful is snapping. So we can turn this on up here and then from the drop down, we can choose exactly what we're snapping to. So with snap enabled, I can now select these top two vertices. And then when I select the move tool, they move and snap to set increments. You can also hold shift to reduce the size of the increment, or you can hold control to move completely freely without snapping. Okay, so let's disable snapping and we'll undo all of that to get our cube back. Now a useful shortcut whilst you're in edit mode is to press A on the keyboard and this will select absolutely everything. You can now right click and select subdivide and you can repeat this multiple times to give you more detail to work with. So if I use edge select and shift to select a few of these edges here, I can then press G on the keyboard and move these edges. And you can see it really does only move those edges. However, with the same edges selected, we can turn on proportional editing select the type and if we use the move tool you can now see all of the connected points are proportionally being edited depending on the size of the brush which can be adjusted by scrolling the mouse wheel up or down and as you can imagine this tool can save you a ton of time when modeling and there we go i made a thing let's disable proportional editing and delete whatever this is by pressing x i'm then going to press shift a add another cube and switch into edit mode First, we're going to look at the extrude tool and the shortcut for this is E on the keyboard. Essentially, this enables us to select a face and extrude this face out. And essentially, this creates an additional section with vertices, edges and faces that we can select. Next, we can select the inset tool. The shortcut for this is I on the keyboard and we can use this to create new faces on the selected face. And we compare this with the extrude tool to create something like this. Next, we're going to select the loop cut tool and the shortcut for this is Control R. And we can use this to create additional geometry both horizontally and vertically. And with the yellow line in position, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to increase or decrease the number of cuts. Click to confirm and then adjust the position or you can right click to move the cuts back to the middle. You can then adjust the loop cut settings from the panel in the bottom left corner and then just click anywhere on the workspace to confirm. Now, in addition to selecting an individual edge, we can also hold down Alt on the keyboard and click on an edge, and this will also select all of the connected edges. We can then select the bevel tool, and the shortcut for this is Control B, and then move the mouse to bevel the edge. This technique can be used to round off hard edges. And again, you can use the scroll wheel to increase or decrease the number of segments. And then when you click to confirm, you get lots more options, so you can fine tune your bevel here, and then when you're happy, click anywhere on the workspace to commit those changes. Now by default our new objects are shaded flat. We can right click on them and shade smooth but you can see it does look a bit weird. One way around this is to go to the object data panel, select the normals drop down and enable auto smooth and as you can see that's a little bit better. 
Okay, let's press X to delete this and then Shift A to add another cube. And for the next minute or so, I'm going to stop talking and use everything we've learned so far to create something that resembles a diamond shape. And this will be used throughout the remainder of this video series. So if you'd like to follow along, this next step is for you. Okay, so we have something that resembles a diamond. It, it's not great, I'll be honest, but it's good practice using all of the tools. So now I'm just gonna move this up and then I'm gonna go Shift A and add a new plane, scale this up so we have some kind of surface for our diamond to sit on. And then from the outliner, I'm going to rename this to diamond. And there we go, that wraps up part four. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at lighting. So if you enjoyed this video, hey, why not subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll see you in part five.